Welcome back. Now, 14 people have lost their lives in farm accidents so far this year. Today marks the end of Farm Safety Week. And joining me this morning to share her story of the farming accident that nearly cost her her life is beef farmer Elizabeth Ormiston. And she joins me alongside Caroline Farrell, Farm Family Chairwoman of the Irish Farmers Association. Good morning, ladies. Thank you for coming in. Good morning, Simon. We might start with you, uh, Elizabeth. You might go back and take us back to the accident that happened on your farm. Well, I had a very simple accident, but it had life-threatening consequences. It happened in July, uh, July 2009. It was a very nice, sunny Sunday morning, and I was all excited. I was bringing a heifer to show, Bailey show. She was a pedigree champion heifer. And Joe was loading the heifer up and led the heifer up on the trailer, and this passenger door on the side of the trailer was opened. And as I was closing the gate up on the back, the little dog went by the side of the trailer and evidently the heifer caught a glimpse of him and he excited her and she kicked the gate and cut me there in the forehead. And I was thrown back and up on cement and uh, I was all right for, we, uh, for a while. And when I went to the hospital... And were you knocked I, unconscious? No, I, asked, I wasn't knocked unconscious. I was all, there was an awful lot of blood everywhere. <clears throat> right. And I remember Joe uh, running up the yard shouting at my son who lived next door. He was actually at first mass in Minolte. And Joe went running up the pass and he sh kept shouting, Peter, come quick, your mother has had an accident. And the two boys caught me and the, carried me up to the back door and put me sitting on a, a, ch a white chair that was yeah. there. And Peter went in and got some towels. And for some reason or other, he took off my wellies. <laughs> and they went back down the yard. So I picked up a welly in <clears> each hand and trotted off down after them and a trail of blood behind me. And I was determined that I was going to the show. I wouldn't get into my own car because it was all... I wasn't going to have messed the car and needed all yeah. blood. But I got into the Jeep. And everywhere then on the way to Cavan, any right turn, it actually bring you back towards those showgrounds in Killing Care. Uh, I keep saying, when Joe was going straight, I'd say, are we not going to the show? But I didn't realise that we didn't have the trailer or the heifer behind us. Right. So when I got to Cavan, as, as we got towards Cavan, apparently I got quiet. And when we got there, I collapsed. And I was in an induced coma for six days. I had um, a brain hemorrhage. My God. And I was actually very sick on the Tuesday evening and they didn't anticipate me probably ever been home again. And since then, in terms of the treatment, and I mean, how are, how are you today? Are you still suffering well, with consequences? Still to the from... point, I still have that point at the back of my head where <clears> I fell back and, and, and uh, fell back on the cement. Even my hairdresser knows you don't touch that point. Mm -hmm. The only other side effect, I've lost my sense of smell, which can be dangerous when it comes to, the boys had to take out my gas and put in electric, electric yeah. cookers for me. And it's sad too, because like um, your, your smell is, it's a sort of a safety device. <clears throat> and as well as that, it, of course, it invokes childhood memories. Like yeah. I used to love, we'd say the smell of freshly mown hay or yeah. mammy stew yeah. or her bacon, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, those things you have to learn to do without. But the other other uh, side effect I have is this hand. Sometimes now we'll say if the children will come on Sunday for, for lunch and you were going to like, I'd be traditionalist, I'd have the homemade soup and everything. Of course, and yeah, choices. yeah. But I would have to start about 11 o'clock on Saturday preparing vegetables. Really? Because it's as if, the only way I can describe it is as if the battery goes dead in it. The and power goes from the hand it. completely. Yeah. And when I would be writing a letter, yeah. I, I would consider myself probably a good enough writer, yeah. but you could see if I was doing, we'll say, two quarters of a fool's cap page, as you'd go down, you'd see the writing deteriorating, and I'd know, that's it, you'd just that's feel like... That's the battery running out battery, in the hand, that's as you how say. I, that's how I work. But, I mean, I'm lucky to be alive, so you work around those. I'd be very determined, and I would see those as... Caroline, when we, when we hear Elizabeth's story, uh, how simply accidents happen... Um, we mentioned earlier on that today is the is comes brings the farm safety week to a close. What what is important for you and your organisation when it comes to farm safety week? Who is the message aimed at? Is it aimed at the people on the farms, or do they need help from government uh, departments? Well, I suppose the the message is aimed at everybody who mm. ever goes near a farm, anybody who's travelling the road when traffic. Uh, farm traffic, silage, whatever combine and all that is going on. Everybody needs to be farm safety aware. And there is um, safety courses uh, uh, going on all the time. And mm. 
as resources, there's ne there will never be enough resources to tackle the farm safety issue and any resources that are available uh, should be used. And I suppose we have the likes of Chagas and the HSA, uh, you know, have a great resource for farm safety. I suppose the IFA website and all those kind of places have information there. But you can give people the information, but you have to get them to use the information. It's how they put that information Absolutely. into practice. Because we were talking before we came on air, Elizabeth and, and Carol, I'm sure you hear this all the time. And it hit home with me is that a farmer's life is so different to anybody else's life in terms of the hours that you work. You know, you were up at five o'clock this morning mm -hmm. working, you know, and you'll work this evening when you go home. So I'd imagine tiredness plays an awful, an awful well, just, huge part in it. Yeah. Well, farming is a profession of dedication mm. and commitment. And, but it's also a very precarious and dangerous commitment, a dangerous profession. And it's a lonely one. And it's not like the normal profession, like nine to five or mm. that. It goes really beyond that beyond that 24 7 really. but also as you say the environment of a farm can be a dangerous place because as you say there's equipment there's people there's animals you know it's about keeping your eye on the ball yeah well it's it's the message is simple to fellow farmers out there is pay attention to detail concentrate on the job at hand and try if you can plan your day's work ahead but as a livestock farmer and as a farmer in general you know, in theory, that works very well, but practically it's not, you know, it's not that manageable because the nature of our business is when you go out the back door or into the yard, there's unforeseen circumstances yeah. and you really can't plan on farming. As you say, Caroline, it's about putting those practices that are that are there for the farmers and people who work on farms. It's having the time to do that, though, isn't it? It is. And, and to take the precautions, as Elizabeth said, before you start. And, you know, bear in mind that children aren't aren't children are children they don't yeah. see danger and it's up to the the adult on the farm to look after the child and make sure that they're away from the the farming area as i say a farm is not a playground and children should be kept away from a huge the farm. amount to be aware of isn't it the other is and the same with the elder the elderly people as well that you know people have to or uh, older people and um, they have to be aware of their own abilities yeah. and unfortunately with age you know sort of you slow down um you're not uh you're and those little jobs aren't as easy absolutely. anymore absolutely well listen we appreciate you coming in thank you for, thank you for sharing your story thank Elizabeth. You very much, thanks Simon. for coming in caroline good to see you thank you thank you and for more information on farm safety week you can head over to the ifa website and coming up next new music from taylor swift and kylie we have your weekly showbiz roundup after this break see you in a minute